Hi, everyone. Welcome once again to The Goddess Inside. I am Austet, and I am here with my special guest and dear friend, Curtis Ryan Woodside, to share with you more in our series of symbolism and magic in ancient Egypt. So hi, Curtis. Hi, Osset. I'm so happy to uh, be here to, to share some uh, interesting mysteries and history from ancient Egypt with you guys. Yes, I love that we can do this and to teach you all something about what you're seeing, whether you're seeing uh, a photograph from ancient Egypt or you're actually there walking through the temples um, and you can find these things and see how they're incorporating all of this magic and symbolism into everything that they do. Exactly. One day, one day, whoever's watching will be there in Egypt with you and I. And we can then tell them like, hey, what's that? And they can, they can tell us. <laughs> yes, because we do have a tour in the works for the future. So you'll definitely want to stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm. um, so because I am recording this on my cell phone, I'm going to ask Curtis if he would please share the screen so we can talk about the um, images. And the, in the first set of the series, we talked about the enemies of Ma'at and how the Pharaoh overcame all of those things, whether it was in the form of the nine bows or the enemies of Egypt, um, or if it was in the form of the gods of chaos, Set and Apep. So um, today we're going to be talking about where we see the goddess Ma'at throughout ancient Egypt. And if you are in the Cairo area and you go out to Saqqara, you will definitely want to go see the Pyramid of Unas. And as you're walking along the causeway to reach the pyramid, you will pass underneath this little um, tunnel. The causeway, yeah. Yes. Yes, and these are the symbols of Ma'at right here that make up the roof of this um, little tunnel. So the plinth um, is a symbol of Ma'at. So you see that over on the left side of this image and you also see it on the right. So as you're walking toward the pyramid, you are inviting then the goddess of balance to come with you. You are and also those stones, those stones really are balanced. I don't know how they stayed up, but <laughs> yes, I know. So even within the architecture, not only is the uh, carving of the rock the symbol of Ma'at, but the fact that these rocks are indeed balanced on top is really something of an archaeological architectural feat um, from ancient history. So as you walk underneath these you are also then kind of clearing, you could think of this as clearing your aura or your energy and rebalancing everything that um, you have to carry with you into the pyramid where you'll be um, then ascending um, to the gods through the texts within the, um, the pyramid. And what's interesting is on this causeway, Pharaoh Unas, on one side, he showed how Egypt had deteriorated when he became Pharaoh. So we see people very malnourished, very skinny. Um, and it talks about sometimes, you know, people eating themselves, well, eating other people because Egypt was having um, a drought. But on the other side, he starts explaining how he was building dams and getting the economy of Egypt back to a, st a stable, plain again. So even what he's saying in this is showing that he restored um, the balance of Ma'at to Egypt. I know. It almost makes me cry. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Um, so then if you go ahead and go to the next slide for me, Curtis, we're going to see how the gods are depicted operating, doing their jobs, in balance and order. So here, this is from the temple of Khonsu in the Karnak temple complex area. And we see the god Ptah seated on his throne and his throne, as you can see, is sitting on top of this plinth of Ma'at. So as the um, architect of the world, um, the builder of temples and 
pyramids um, and the creator God, he's creating and building everything and keeping it all in balance. So he's either sitting upon that or he's standing upon that. And that's that plinth right underneath. And it's the same shape as the Unas causeway. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And here you can see the Pharaoh's hand is coming out and, oh, oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can see the Pharaoh's hand is coming out here and he's actually holding an offering of Ma'at. Yes, so he's offering Ma'at, the, the goddess of balance, to Ptah as he rules the world yeah. in a state of balance. Thank you for zooming up on that. <laughs> um, also, we see more depictions of the Pharaoh offering Ma'at to the gods. And within the Temple of Abydos, then we see Seti I offering the goddess Ma'at to the gods. And basically what he's saying is, I have ruled throughout my pharaohship um, and have kept everything in balance. And I return the kingdom to you in a state of balance. It is exactly the way that I have found it. Um, so here we see um, Seti also offering the goddess Ma'at. And it's just this sweet little carving of her sitting there in his hand. And the symbol so, of Ma'at, for those who don't know, is the ostrich feather, which would be put on the scales in the weighing of the heart. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So she's, that's how we can tell that he's offering Ma'at. Because in the next slide, Curtis is going to show us what else the um, king might be offering. Mm -hmm. So this is an image um, from Abu Simbel, the Temple of Ramses II, um, Seti I's son. And what is so interesting, right at the center of the facade of the temple, we see the god Ra, but it's not just a carving of the god Ra. It is actually Ramses throne name, which is Wusad Maedra. So if we look on Ramses shoulder here, we'll see the jackal headed uh, staff, which is known as Wusad. And then we see the goddess Ma'at. So Wusad Ma'at and then Ra, which is the sun disk. But here's an actual statue of his name, but in an actual statue form. So we see here, on the left, him holding the Wusser staff. And then on the right is the goddess Ma'at. Um, I'll try and go in for you. You can see here's the goddess Ma'at, and he's holding that as well. And right in the center is Ra. So it's Wusser Ma'at Ra. So basically, it's Ramsey's throne name, which means the justice of the sun god Ra is powerful. So his full throne name is Wusat Mahendra Sitapin Ra. That's the, the full name. So it's, he included Ma'at into his name to show how much balance he brought to Egypt. Um, and compared to what we saw Seti um, holding, why won't it zoom for me? <laughs> Compared to what we saw Seti holding, here we see Ramses II on the left and on the right, and he's holding up what we would think is the goddess Ma'at. However, if we look closely, we see the Wusser staff here. So it's Wusser Ma'at Ra. So he's offering his own name to the god Ra. So to yes. bring justice and balance the Pharaoh is saying, I am bringing justice and balance to Egypt. Yes. And what I love about this whole carving here of his name, it's like ancient Egyptian uh, charades or Pictionary where you would have to draw the things and someone would guess what it was, you know. Um, yeah. So I think we should develop a board game, Curtis. <laughs> Glyphionary. Yes, ancient Egyptian Pictionary of all yeah. of these things. Um, 
Yeah, so as you can see, the goddess Ma'at was very, very important, not only, um, you know, as a goddess of balance, but it, she's portrayed in so many different ways throughout the temples and uh, pyramid areas within ancient Egypt. And so offering a way for us to incorporate this today is to always remember if you like Curtis was saying one of her symbols also is the ostrich feather so if you wanted to get a pendant of an ostrich feather or an actual ostrich feather and set it by your door or set it by uh, where you fix your hair and your makeup every day or where you get dressed something that you can always remember that throughout the day that you will live your life in balance that you will like SETI here be able to offer back to the Nedaru, all of nature, life in balance. And um, so she's, she's always there. She's always ready to help us. And um, just incorporating her symbols throughout your space can help remind you um, yeah. to do that, to invoke her presence and to live in Ma'at. Yeah. And even Seti had Ma'at in his throne name. So his throne name is Men, Maat Ra. So yeah. Maat was very important, actually, you know, and she mm -hmm. had, as, as you know, the 42, um, basically the 42 commandments. <laughs> yes, um, yes. Yeah, so we, we won't go through all of them now, but some of them are, are really, you know, quite nice. Like I didn't make anybody cry. Um, one of them right. was, uh, you know, I did not kill anybody. I did not pee in the Nile. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, they were so, uh, I, I love all the 42. Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> so to read through and to um, connect with. So yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Curtis, for joining me once again today. Thank you, thank you. It's been so much fun as always. Yes, and so we'll have more of these within our series coming up for you. In the meantime, make sure to check out all the links below because we'll have all of Curtis's links to his YouTube and his Patreon there where he's sharing behind the scenes things with everyone and exclusive stuff. It's always a lot of fun. And um, also my Patreon links and the website will be listed below and you're already here on my channel. So thank you so much. If you haven't already subscribed, subscribe here, subscribe um, to Curtis's and um, share the love of ancient Egypt with both of us. Exactly. So, once again. Thank um, you. So until next time, as always, enjoy everything about today. Bye. Bye.